Before, during, and after Apollo, Skylab, and ASTP, NASA's unmanned planetary programs were giving scientists exciting new glimpses into the history of the solar system, from early explorers to the infrared astronomy satellite. Seven Mariner spacecraft flew by the planets Mars, Venus, and Mercury, sending back a stream of pictures and data. Ten Pioneer spacecraft did likewise, including Jupiter flybys and probes through the atmosphere of Venus. Pioneer 10 became the first man-made object to leave the solar system. Atmosphere physics, astronomy, meteorology, and geodesy. These are just a few of the scientific disciplines studied by dozens of explorer-class orbiters through the years. Hundreds of sounding rockets have probed the atmosphere above where balloons are effective, but below the area that satellites fly. Biosatellite was sent aloft to answer basic biological questions. Will cells divide normally while weightless? How does zero-g affect plant growth? Would radiation and weightlessness be a hazard on long-duration space flights? Everything from plants to primates were orbited aboard biosatellite to find out. There were the Ogos, orbiting geophysical observatories that blossomed out like giant dragonflies in space. Oso, orbiting solar observatories, studied our sun and its influence on Earth. In the last 25 years, our orbiting astronomical observatories have radically changed our view of the universe. We now see a dynamic universe of quasars and black holes and other extraordinary objects, of cataclysmic forces causing the birth and death of stars, of billions of galaxies wheeling in the immensity of space. We looked back at planet Earth with Landsat remote sensing satellites. Crops, forests, pollution, all can be photographed in great detail to help us better manage our Earth's resources. The Viking program was a systematic effort to investigate the planet Mars. Two separately launched Viking spacecraft made up of a pair of orbiters that would photograph from above the planet and twin landers built to descend to the Martian surface spent 11 months and 420 million miles traveling to the mysterious red planet. The lander's robot arm conducted chemical and biological tests on the soil in a search for life forms. Martian weather and seismic reports were also sent back routinely. Cameras began returning pictures, thousands of pictures. Color photographs showed a surface littered with rocks. A fine dust, red or yellow-brown, could be seen everywhere. We even had a chance to view the two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos. Vikings' complex science and technology were considered to be a triumph equal to the landings on the moon. Two unmanned Voyager spacecraft carried a record with the sights and sounds of Earth, just in case they encounter a cosmic neighbor along the way. Their interplanetary journey was designed to take them past Jupiter and Saturn, and eventually one Voyager was to pass close to Uranus and Neptune. Voyager sensors recorded Jupiter's intricate weather patterns and detected massive lightning bolts in its churning cloud tops, 
It took 40 minutes for a signal from Voyager passing Jupiter to be received by mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, so the spacecraft had to be essentially automatic. Voyager also took a good look at Jupiter's largest moons. There's Io with its active volcanoes. Europa. Ganymede, the largest moon, appears to be a mixture of rock and ice. And Callisto, probably the oldest of the four. The Voyager's next assignment was to fly by Saturn and its moons. Saturn's vast ring system is made up of many small particles that orbit the huge planet in wave-like patterns. Its atmosphere is buffeted by a strong jet stream that blows eastward at 1,200 miles per hour. Voyager detected the hottest gases ever observed in the solar system, up to a billion degrees Fahrenheit. As of now, two-thirds of the planets in our solar system have been explored, and by the end of this decade, we will have explored most of the rest, including Uranus and Neptune.